to the FanDuel Punch Out. I'm Jason Gilbert, J. Gilbert 11, taking a look at the FanDuel 7 game slate tonight. Uh, if you're coming over from the other two pods or any of them at all, you know that my take on pitching is it's not strong. Um, it's definitely a risky night, but the good thing on FanDuel is at least you just have to pick one of them. Um, so there's definitely a lot of a lot of different ways to go, a lot of bad pitchers to kind of target tonight. Um, it should be, I think, pretty high scoring despite the kind of lack of pitching. I think there's a lot of hitter production that could definitely surface. Um A's and Angels first one here, Ricky Nolasco versus Jesse Hahn. Um, I like the A's prices, uh, and I'm not a big fan of Ricky Nolasco on FanDuel. I mentioned him as a possible quality start type guy, possibly getting a win on DraftKings. Um, and obviously the A's prices are more kind of directed to, towards Chris Davis and Stephen Vogt. Both are 3,300. 3, uh, Nolasco against righties has not been good. 365 Wobo, 1.41 going back to last year. Uh, 1.41 home runs per nine to righties. So Chris Davis certainly with some potential. Um, you look at lefties against Nolasco, 321 Wobo. So nothing spectacular, but nothing bad either. Um, and those are kind of the only two that I feel really fine using here on Fandle. It's kind of just, I don't like Coco Crisp at 3.5. Um, not a big fan of diving down to a Jed Lowry or anything really in the back half of that lineup. So I'm kind of staying away. Uh, I think really just those two names should catch some pretty lower ownership. Um, and on the Angel side, um, Cole Calhoun, Albert Poole, certainly the better values. I don't mind paying up for a Mike Trout if you want to go that route. Han hasn't really been the best uh, right-handed pitcher. Um, so I'm okay with, with taking some stats at them. Obviously, Han has shown some quality in the past. This year, uh, nothing really that, that leads me to believe he's going to be great. Um, you know, And I think against lefties, you could definitely take a look at Calhoun, just given Han 351 Woba allowed going back to last year. That, that would kind of be a contrarian value play. Um, but obviously, in that ballpark, there's never really a ton of production. Um, it's just kind of a couple of main names for this Angels team, as always. Uh, Mets and Yankees next here, Nathan Eovaldi, Bartolo Colon, two guys who do struggle with left-handed bats, Eovaldi, 355 Woba, um, allowed to lefties, 1.07 home runs per nine. Um, you look at Cologne, uh, 321 Woba allowed, 1.34 home runs per nine. So I don't mind lefties in this matchup here. Um, Curtis Granderson, Neil Walker, uh, James Longy, Michael Conforto, all very cheap or at a decent price tag. Jay Bruce is obviously the only one who's priced up quite a bit. Um, Mets don't have a big Vegas tool tonight, but I think that's okay. I, I'm hoping that kind of keeps their ownership down. I think Nathan Eovaldi might be an actual target to use, as, as I think he, he could be a viable option in GPPs. But if that's the case and he does gain some ownership, I might be more inclined to kind of jumping off of it and taking some Mets bats against him. Uh, especially in Yankee Stadium, there's a lot of home run potential there for a lot of those left-handed bats. And given the fact that, that all the front five are lefties against the Ovaldi, he may have a tough time. Um, the Yankees, um, I definitely like their prices here. Uh, going up against Cologne, who I mentioned is, is very, very average against left-handed hitters. Um, I'm not on Cologne tonight. I think you can target the Yankees, you know, Gardner, Ellsbury at those prices, and, and even to Sherry McCann, I don't mind. And if you want to get weird, I'm okay with the Starling Castro in the fifth spot if you wanted to, to dive down at second base. Um, certainly an intriguing option, and the Yankees um, are kind of favorites with Vegas to score over four and a half runs. So I could definitely see that being a potential. Obviously, the lefties get a big bonus there in that that friendly ballpark. So that could actually be a game to kind of look at for some a lot of lefty power. Uh, Rangers and Orioles next here, AJ Griffin versus Wade Miley. And uh, the Orioles price is uh, a little bit more expensive here, but I definitely like them. It's kind of a little bit reversed. You have your lefties kind of priced up a little bit like a Chris Davis. Um, Matt Weider's 3K is reasonable, certainly. Hyun Soon Kim, and, and I'm referencing the lefties just because Griffin has struggled with lefties. 368 will be allowed, 45% hard ball rate, 2.38 home runs per nine. So in Kingdom Yards, friendly ballpark for lefty power is certainly intriguing. Um, and then you can also toss in the Adam Jones and Manny Machado 3.537 price tag there, just given their success against right handed pitching uh, in the past and the season alone. So uh, Baltimore projected for five runs. I'm certainly fine with playing them here against Griffin, uh, one of my favorite teams to kind of target there. Uh, and on the Rangers, um, I'm only looking at really two guys here, and that's Adrian Beltre, 3-5. If you wanted to spin down at third base uh, in Desmond, 4-4, it is expensive for, for a, a fan to an outfielder, but I'm certainly in love with him, uh, just given the fact that Wade Miley, 3-3-8, Woba to right. He's going back to last year, 1.11 homes per nine. Both Beltre and Desmond rip left-handed pitching and in that ballpark. They'll receive a big boost. So I'm okay with them. Um, I don't mind a Ryan Rua or Luke Roy. It's a little bit better price for Luke Roy here. Um, definitely look at the righties in that matchup. 
Pirates and Braves, and, and here I'm okay with kind of using um, a little bit more of the Braves bats going up against Vogelsung, who has a lot of 392 Woba to lefties, 2.06 home runs for nine. Certainly intriguing um, just because, one, it's a small slate. You're getting a, a poor right-hander on the hill, and obviously not a lot of people expect a Braves offense to put any production on the board. But uh, given the fact that, you know, they added Meg Kemp in the middle of that lineup, they surround him with a bunch of lefties, I think this could be a matchup where Vogelsung runs into some trouble. And, um, you know, the Braves actually put some runs on the board. So it's definitely something to consider, definitely something to consider working into other stacks um, if you want to go that route. Uh, as far as the Pirates go, um, the Polanco price tag, the Marte price tag is still high for me. As I mentioned in DraftKings, it, it's something I don't feel great about using. Um, but it's certainly an option against Jenkins. It's certainly an option to use the surrounding pieces around like a Kang, like a Matt Joyce, if you want to go that route. But uh, Pirates, really not a, a DFS-friendly team. It's something that I'm just kind of staying away from for the most part. Uh, Toronto and Houston in a uh, minute made there. Bautista, a little bit different price tag from DraftKings. He's priced up here. He's much more expensive. Um, the Jays front four are kind of always in play. They're always expensive. I might look at them solely as a stack. Maybe a one-off I would take is, is a Jose Bautista. Um, about that, it, it's kind of limited. You look at Fires, 3.37, Wobo out to righties, 1.39 home runs per nine. So I don't mind the front five there. Uh, Fires is pretty average against lefties as well, so you can take a stab at Saunders, but Saunders really hasn't been the most consistent. Of He's really kind of fallen off the table, um, but definitely something you can still consider in that ballpark. Uh, friendly for lefty and righty power, you can definitely take a look at it, but I'm not getting crazy with the Blue Jays. I think they're kind of a lackluster offense at this point. Um, but obviously, as we saw last night, there are some solo shot power, like Donaldson twice. We saw Bautista, Homer. So I'm okay with obviously getting that home run potential exposure. But um, a double-digit kind of run performance, I don't really see happening there. But I guess it always is possible to run a Houston, um, kind of similar to, to uh, DraftKings. I'm looking at three guys here, George Springer, Jose Altuve, Evan Gaddis. I like the Evan Gaddis price tag at 2.7. Uh, Springer, not quite the same value uh, that he was over on FanDuel or over on DraftKings. He's much more expensive here, but kind of deservingly so. Those three guys really do hit lefties very well. And Hap has been serviceable, so it's not like you're getting a bad lefty on the hill. But obviously there is some home run potential. There is some upside for those guys. And there's obviously upside for the Houston Astros tonight, who are a boom or bust offense. Um, and while they do rank 24th in Woba uh, against lefties, there's obviously a lot of potential as far as the ISO numbers say. So I'm okay with taking some shots against them, especially given the fact that Hat might be a, a chalky pitcher, which pretty much leads you to see what this type of slate is. Um, Dodgers and Rockies next here, Tyler Chatwood versus Kenta Maeda. And, and much like everywhere, every other site, um, Dodgers are priced up here in cores as expected. Tyler Chatwood, uh, serviceable on the road. He's He's been really solid on the road this year, but at home he's been a completely different arm, as many are. Uh, he's horrible. Um, allows over 360 Woba to, to both uh, sides of the plate there. So I'm okay with, with kind of using the Dodgers as my focal point for this offense, uh, especially that friendly Adrian Gonzalez 3-7 price tag. I definitely don't mind that. Uh, same Kind of the same thing as DraftKings. I, I really am looking to get Corey Seager and Justin Turner into my lineup tonight. I think it's a great spot for both of them to do some damage. Justin Turner even more so. I'm a big fan of his hammers or handed pitching. And then you'd add the course factors on top of it. So uh, definitely going to be something that, that I'm, I'm intrigued with and definitely looking to get some exposure to Dodgers. Uh, as far as the Rockies side goes, um, you know, Carlos Gonzalez could be out of the lineup tonight. Uh, they're already missing Trevor Story. Charlie Blackman, 4-1. Arenado, 4-2. Obviously, the only guys I'm really looking to use against Maeda. Um, I'm not looking to pick on Maeda. I, I, I think, obviously, Blackman and Arenado are kind of the only guys maybe you can take a, a deep GPP play with. But I don't think the Rockies are really worth it tonight. Um, I know they're still projected for right around five runs. But... Uh, I'm certainly not intrigued given the fact that Maida has had good success against them. Obviously, you know, Coors is still a different animal, but um, I'm just not in love with paying Coors prices and, and not a good matchup. So uh, personally, I'm, I'm just kind of staying away from the Rockies there. But obviously, you know the names to target if you still want that exposure. Mariners and Red Sox, Drew Pomeranz versus Ariel Miranda. And um, you can definitely look at some right-handed bats here in this game, um, although it's kind of limited. Talking about Pomeranz, um, obviously, you know, he's one of the better pitchers on the slate here tonight. Um, but obviously, given a lefty, you're obviously got to consider Nelson Cruz, Dejo Lee, and whatever catchers behind the dish for Seattle could be Zunino, could be Ionetta. Um, 
to definitely take a look at against Pomeranz, just given that those three guys are more lefty matchers than, than the fact that Pomeranz is bad. So we definitely could see uh, some Seattle put up some runs um, as far as the home runs. I'm not expecting a ton of production as far as, you know, a seven, eight run ball game, but I do think maybe a solo shot here, a solo shot there, maybe a two run shot by Cruz is certainly possible. Um, and at their prices, it's definitely something I'm worth, worth taking a look at. Um, and on the Red Sox side, I really don't like this team um, uh, against the lefty there without Hanley in the lineup. Hanley would have been a nice value at first base, but um, Bogart's still expensive, 3-9. I, I don't mind him just given his success against lefties, but um, the rest of that lineup, not quite worth it. Um, that's not really worth the 4-7 price tag. Ortiz at his usual price range. So for me, I'm just kind of staying away from the Sox. There really isn't a whole lot of value there. Um, and I think you can, can really kind of focus on the, on the games before that one. So that's going to wrap things up with the FanDuel Punch-Out. Be sure to check out DaveFantasyCafe.com for all great tools and content.